Hi everyone and welcome to Dream Space TV here at One Microsoft Place in Dublin. We are so excited for today's episode, aren't we Amanda? Yes, I cannot wait, Corey. Well, in our last episode we covered a lot because we actually learned all about Minecraft Education Edition and we even took on our first challenge which was to build our dream home. We also learned about various tools such as like our camera, our book and quill and our posters so we could showcase what we had just learned. Yeah, exactly. And what we're going to learn today is a lot actually about space. So we're going to explore things like our solar system. We're specifically going to look at Mars and we're going to look at how NASA take part in exploration programs. And all of this is going to inform our build challenge today. But let's start with our solar system, okay? So now will be a good time to pause and write down everything you know about the solar system. Okay, so maybe we'll take a look at a picture of our solar system, yes. Corey. Okay, let's. And have a talk through it. And I, I wonder how people got on with this in their classrooms, like what discussions they might have had. Um, I know space can really promote lots of different interests in conversation. Space might be like my favourite thing to learn about. I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this photo here from um, the NASA website. So here yes. we can actually see our solar system. And we can see all the different planets in our solar system. Mm. So Amanda... I'm going to put you to the test here. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to see if you can name all the planets in our solar system from the start to the finish, like in order? Okay, so from the sun. Because I can sun. see here on the left-hand side, that's the sun. Yeah. Okay, so we have, here we go. Okay. Mercury, <laughs> uh, Venus, Earth, Mars, <laughs> Jupiter. You're doing well. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Fair play to you. Do you have a way that you memorise that or do you just know it? Um, I just think I remember it, yeah, just from maybe looking at it with students in secondary school. Oh yeah, because yeah. you were a science teacher. Yeah, just in case I mentioned <laughs> in that In case you missed that last season yeah. and in the last episode. Um, okay, well, I am um, not a science teacher, so I did have a way to remember it, okay? okay? No, don't be laughing at me. <laughs> but I love it. It's my very excited mother just served us Nachos. Oh, nice. I <laughs> love nachos. So I had to throw it in there. And do you know what's cool about this, Corey, is it's showing like the sizes. Yes, that's, I think that's my favourite part. Because sometimes it can be hard to kind of picture the size of these planets. And this is kind of the scale. So you can see here that here's Earth. Here we are. Mm -hmm. And beside it, we have Mars. And it's actually not that much smaller, I suppose, yeah. than Earth. And currently we're looking at a lot about like exploration to Mars. Um, but before us humans maybe go up there, I think it's important that we think about this. Yeah. So now will be a good time to pause and write down and discuss the scientific questions you would ask before you would go to Mars. Okay, so we actually posed the same question to St. Phelan's National School in Cavan, and these are the questions they come up with. All right, looking forward to seeing this. I know. We might so try and answer them if we know the answers. Oh, but yeah. the thing is about Hopefully. space, there's actually so much, like there's so many questions you could ask. But yeah. anyway, what's the first one here? Um, okay, so it says, will it be possible to build shelter or towns Ooh. on Mars? And I've, I love this, sorry, before we go on, look, uh, they have all the planets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all labelled. Yeah, labelled. They must have watched season one. Um, yeah, I suppose that's something we're not 100% sure of yet. So the whole point is that um, with exploration and maybe with the NASA programmes we might talk about in a minute, um, that's what they're really trying to figure out. Yeah. Like, is it possible to build shelters and, and things like that up there? Um, so that's, we can't answer that one right now, mm. but it's an excellent question. And it's obviously very important for us to think of because if yeah. we, as humans, went there, we would need a shelter, yeah. definitely. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, now we have, will it be too hot or too cold on Mars? And this oh. is a great one, isn't it? Yeah. Because this is where our diagram and our picture comes in handy. Yes, definitely. So if you remember, we talked about the order of the planets from the sun and Mars was after Earth. So Mars is further from the sun. So even though it looks red in all the images and that might make you think, oh, it's hot, it's actually colder there oh. than it is on Earth. <clears throat> and it gets less light as well because it's further from yeah, the sun. Makes yeah. sense. Okay, the next one we have is, will it be possible to breathe on Mars? Okay, 
Mm. Mm. So obviously on Earth, we have in the air around us, we have enough oxygen, don't we? That's what humans need to breathe. We have enough oxygen to breathe. Um, on Mars, there's not enough oxygen for us to be just walking around and breathing. So that's, again, if we're going to live there, that's pretty important because yeah. <laughs> we definitely need oxygen. So we need some way of getting oxygen into our bodies, whether it's in like a space suit or yeah. within maybe... Um, I don't know where we where we live yeah. or kind of the vessel we're in um but yeah so it will so i suppose in that question it will be possible but yeah. not just like we are right now yeah. uh, on earth yeah okay um will we find nourishment on mars okay so this is one we're not 100 yeah. percent sure of yet isn't it no yeah we're not i know sure the curiosity rover which is one of the rovers that nasa sent up it did find like um elements that wouldn't kind of imply that there could be life there so like maybe plant life yeah. or different things or even maybe water, water. Yeah. but um it's still under investigation but again <laughs> i completely understand why you'd ask this um yeah. that would have been the first thing i would have been like food yeah we get food so we definitely we need obviously food to survive so yeah. that's going to be very important and then will we be able to walk or drive on mars this yeah. is actually, I had the exact same question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were chatting about this, yeah. weren't we? So um, there's less gravity on Mars than Earth. Mm -hmm. And gravity is obviously the force that kind of pulls us to the ground. Yeah. So that's why we can like, stand. stand. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can walk, but it just means you kind of, it takes you longer to come down. Yeah. So it can, it can take you longer like to bounce. move around. Yeah. yeah, but as a result, you don't spend as much energy because yeah. you're kind of like just floating along at different points as well. And yeah. um, so these things will be possible, I think. Um, but it might just take a little bit longer than it takes on, on Earth. But they're brilliant <laughs> questions. They're well to, done to yeah. everyone in St. Balaam's for those. And we actually learned loads, didn't we, when we were researching these questions? Yes. Um, so it was amazing to get them sent in, so thank you. And now I suppose it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Why are they sending these rovers to Mars mm. and not humans, okay? So um, we talked about there about different rovers that are going, and I suppose the latest rover that's traveling to Mars is the Perseverance rover. But to learn more about that, I think we should watch the video um, from NASA. We are a species of explorers, believers. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We are willing to do the hard things to overcome the many challenges. This is what brings out the best in us. We are go for a mission to the moon. Our path has led to success and to bitter losses. We come together today to mourn the loss of seven brave Americans. Yet, even when faced with tragedy and setbacks, we persevere. We keep striving. We keep believing. From space, we see our planet as a whole. We see the challenges facing it, and we face those challenges together. We will not give up. We challenge convention. We refuse to accept the status quo. The time at hand is hard, but we will persevere. We can still draw hope from the moon and the stars, from space, from exploration. There is a new day beyond the challenges we face now. Curiosity, insight, spirit, opportunity. If you think about it, all of these names of past Mars rovers are qualities we possess as humans. Ten, nine, we have ignition sequence start. But if rovers are to be the qualities of us as a race, we missed the most important thing. Three, two, perseverance. Launch, commit, liftoff. We have liftoff. We are a species of explorers. We will meet many obstacles on our way to Mars. But as humans, we'll not give up. We will always persevere. What an inspiring video. I absolutely love that video. And I find it so interesting how they came up with the name Perseverance yeah. Rover. They actually had a competition. So they got people to really imagine 
like what what would be a really cool and apt name for this so that might be something we need to keep in mind for our challenge today and i suppose with all that in mind now i think it's a good idea to let's pop onto the nasa website and have a look at this perseverance rover in more detail yes 100 percent. and while corey's doing that um, it is important that we're going to look at this because our build challenge today will be around us looking at building our own rover but we might take some inspiration here now from the perseverance one yeah and there it is in all its glory Brilliant. and a kind of still shot looks great and some quick facts um, but if I scroll up I can actually learn more about the rover so I'm going to click into here and this is going to kind of tell me all the different features that the rover has and one thing I find so interesting about this is that they kind of label the parts after part of the human body ah uh, yeah so like here we have the brains, which is the computers of the rover. And um, we also have eyes and ears, which represent the cameras on the rover. Um, and then wheels or legs so that the rover can move. Brilliant. And actually those ones you mentioned, I think, is what helps the rover move around. It uses its eyes and ears and the cameras to like basically take an image. And then those images go into the computer. And then the computer then knows then where to drive, I think. Okay, so we were just in here, learning about the rover, and I see beside we have send your name to Mars. Okay, so cool. that's so cool. So obviously the Perseverance rover has gone, so we've missed that, um, but I'm sure they'll be sending more rovers to Mars so we can actually fill out this boarding pass with our name on it and then it can go to Mars next time. I love it. So cool. And then over here, we have create fun photos with our Mars photo booth. Okay, now we might do that a little bit later mm. on. Definitely. But Amanda, you mentioned that um, our build challenge was going to be around Mars and mm. we were going to be building a rover. So do you want to go into Minecraft there and see if there's anything that can help us with that? Yeah, I think we'll get logged in now. So I'm going to put in my username and my password and log in. Okay, so now that we are logged in, um, you can see similar to the home screen that we introduced in our last episode. Um, so we're going to just jump straight into play. And this time we are going to go view library. And unlike the last time where we went biomes and worlds, if you remember, this time we're going to actually go into this one here that says monthly build challenges. So I'm going to click on that. And there's loads of really cool challenges you can uh, find in here. A lot of them help you learn about lots of different concepts. But if I go down in here, there's one that says build a Mars rover, which is exactly what we said we were going to do. So I'm going to go click on that one and create world. So in a second, we're gonna make a plan for how, uh, well, what I think my rover might look like. Um, but what we might do first is see what the world looks like and actually see um, the rover that the Minecraft Education Edition team built as well. So um, I'm in the world here now. I can see there is a poster here telling me about the Build a Mars Rover Challenge and there's some uh, extra tasks if I want to try. But look, if I come over here and I'm using all the tools we talked about last, uh, last episode to kind of move and so on. Um, there is the Perseverance rover that the Minecraft Education Edition team have built, which is looking, I have to say, excellent. And I might just fly up to get an kind of aerial view of it. It looks really cool. And if I fly up even more, you can see this is like the surface of Mars that they've kind of uh, built out. So if I land back onto the ground here, um, I kind of have a big space here, Corey. So I, it might give me an idea of roughly the size that I want to build. So we might go ahead okay. and make our plan. Let's. Um, as always, plan, and then we'll, I'll go ahead and build out what I think it's going to look like, and then we'll have a little review afterwards. Okay, so this is your rover. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to just put rover in the middle. And one of the things we mentioned was that we saw the video of how the Perseverance rover got its name. So we're going to ask you, and I'm going to have to think myself, of the <laughs> name I'm going to give my rover. But I might let the name come to me. Yes, As I, I build so. it, I might look for uh, <laughs> inspiration. Okay. So if we think back to what we learned about the Perseverance rover, it first of all needed to move somehow. Okay. And I can see in my Minecraft world here that it has like wheels, like four wheels. Um, but what I might do is, I don't know if you, I don't know how to explain this properly, but like, um, like roller tracks. Do you know, like it goes around like this and it kind of moves over the ground. Yeah. You see sometimes yeah. like tanks have it. Yes, so, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know if roller tracks is the right name, but we'll call it that. We don't know <laughs> what it means anyway. Roller tracks. So Perfect. that's going to be my movements. And I like that because it's unique to yours. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, so that's the first thing. 
So then the other thing to kind of, we need to remember is it does need to have like sensors. So if we want to put sensors plus maybe cameras, okay. it needs to be able to take in its environment and its surroundings. And remember the Perseverance Rover is actually what it's looking for is kind of to see, was there any signs of life historically on Mars? So um, it needs to be able to like gather um, in Rocks kind of and samples stuff. and stuff. Yeah. So. I suppose maybe just put another arrow and say um, like, like a, a gathering a scooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a gathering, a, a ga like gathers, gathers even just say, and I'll, I'll understand what, what I remember okay. by that. When I look back up, I'll be like, ah, yes. That could be like the arms and legs thing that, that like maybe was been mentioned with before. Okay. Okay. So that's the next thing because it's going to need to take in its environment. It's going to need to take in samples. Um, it's also going to um, need, well, not that it needs, but it will have some sort of like antenna. Okay, so I'm going to go have a look here and I can see that it does, this one actually, the one the Minecraft team does have an antenna. Yeah. Okay. So we might just put that one in. So I'm getting inspiration for this. I'm not going to copy it exactly though. I'm definitely going to put my own spin on it. Okay. And then the final thing. Now, not that it necessarily needs this, but I just think this is kind of cool. I'm thinking of adding like some sort of like unit or module on top so that if we did send a human or an astronaut up to Mars they could actually like get into the module and sleep there or breathe there because we talked about how the surface doesn't have the oxygen and stuff like you know that. What? That is a great idea. Thanks. Looks unreal. Hopefully it works now. We'll see. We'll review as we go. Yeah. Now's a good time to pause and plan out your rover. All right, so I'm going to check out my inventory now and start gathering my materials that I think might be useful to execute this plan. So I'm going to get going. Okay, so I think I've gotten in to a good kind of point. Anyway, to take a, like, take a breath anyway and review. Yeah. Um, I definitely had to use some perseverance. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse the pun. You love a pun. I love a pun. Um, but I can see here, if you can see on my screen, there is the Perseverance rover that was built by uh, the Minecraft Education Edition team on this uh, world. But if I look here is my one, and I'll talk, discuss my name in a second. So I just want to quickly fly through a few things I did. Um, so here's my tracks that will like roll around. I actually can see I left out a little thing here, but I can come back and do that in a minute. Um, uh, so that was the first thing we had yep. up on our list. So roller tracks, sensors and cameras. So there is, there's like a sensor here so that if the, um, if we are going to have someone so that's going to be living here or that's going to come up and stay here for a while. And um, there's a sensor here that maybe would help activate things, but also take in temperature and stuff. And um, these things here are anvils, but I've used them as like a camera instead. Ah, Just kind of, they look like cameras. So in Minecraft, we can do that when we're building stuff. We can mm. kind of take what looks like something and use it in a certain way. So um, that's what I'm going to say are my cameras. I've one on each side. Um, if I fly up a bit, you can see I have these antennas. So that's just um, these bars I have in my hand at the moment in, in slot one there. Um, and what else have I got there? That's my antenna. How did you get on uh, with the gathers? Oh, gathers, yeah. I could not figure that one out. That so is hard. Yeah, I think I, I would like to hear from some pupils about how they got on with kind of building something that would gather materials because yeah. that's actually a really important part of this mission. Yeah. So, you know, I really need to, I, I'll work on it, but yeah, I didn't figure it out while I was doing it here. But the final one there was the module. So I did do that. So you can see here, if I fly over, um, I'm gonna just uh, land here. Um, and if I move in uh, slightly this way, you can see this is actually a trap door that I put on top. So ah. you come up the ladder and you'd go into the trap door. So I'm gonna open my trap door and oh well, you need to go in so let me jump jump up again oh are you not cooperating oh i brought in my agent <laughs> <laughs> so i'll come back to that in a sec so here we are in um inside the module now and um, so you can see it's pretty tight in here mm. 
So maybe if I was to do it again, I'd give myself more space. And saying that though, I was, I strategically picked glass as the material because if it's going to be darker, if we said it's further than the sun and it's going to be colder, I thought glass might help maybe in some ways. So maybe I'm wrong on that, but that was just my little bit of thinking. And also it means you can see the view yes. of Mars while you're there, if you are going to be the astronaut that lands up. So if I fly back out again, Okay, so I'm I'm happy enough with that. So I did everything yeah. Mara gathers, but um, it's pretty big now. It's the only other thing. Like it's very big. <laughs> it's like a tank, really. I don't know um, how well it would get on. Like how light it would be to drop. You know the way they have to like drop these uh, yeah. rovers. Pretty heavy potentially. So that could be an issue if NASA were building this. They might need to look at very like light material. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll cross those challenges. I'm happy enough though at yeah. the same time. I used my imagination as best I could and I tried to stick with my plan. Um, so we might look at documenting our learning like we did last time, Corey. Definitely. So last time when we were documenting our learning, we used um, the signs and we used the camera and the book and quill. Yeah. So there is a couple of other ways that we can do it, and posters is one of them. So okay. posters are very similar to signs, except they're just bigger. So I'm going to go into my inventory and I'm going to look for poster. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Oh yeah, I see it. It looks like a blackboard. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just replace my um, pipes. I don't need them anymore. And I'll bring that out. Okay. So um, if I go to uh, number one, which is now on my hotbar, that's my poster. So here is my rover. So I might just put it literally right in front. Oh yeah, so I'm after placing it and now a text box yeah. has opened up. So um, here is the now. I did say <laughs> to name the rover, didn't I? Yeah, and you said you'd let it come to you. <laughs> yeah, I'd be inspired maybe. Yeah. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll give it like an Irish name, an Irish word. So we'll use oh. a, a word, Asquelga. So I think we'll call it the Mishnock Rover. Mishnock. So that means courage. <gasps> so, so NASA, if you want that, you're gonna have to like yeah. I named it. Okay, so here's the Mishnock Rover, <laughs> um, which was built uh, by well planned and built. Yeah. By Amanda and Corey. Aww. Okay. So, and I'm gonna exit, and there you go. There's my nice little poster now, so that. Again, if someone else comes into our world, they'll see. Yeah, oh, that's what can, it's called. They yeah. can learn all about it because there's loads of room on the poster, isn't okay. it? So more yeah, things. loads, loads yeah. of room. Yeah. Um, okay, so I suppose another thing that we could use is what's called a non-player character or an NPC. And they're actually in your inventory. Okay, so I'm going to go into my inventory. Going to get rid of poster NPC. See, okay, and I have this really colourful egg. egg. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to take that one out. I'm going to place that in there. And, and NPCs are too. great because they're a way in which you can kind of tell your story through other characters that might not be necessarily like the main player in the game or something, yeah. you know? Okay. They're a way to kind of just showcase your learning and tell your story. So I suppose if we were thinking about an NPC, well, what kind of NPC would we want in space? Yes. Well, I think we go with an astronaut really, wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah. So, but where I'm gonna, I think what I'll do is I'll spawn my NPC inside yeah. my module that I that I built. Ah, so good. I'm gonna go in and ignore my agent there. That was uh, my accident. I, I hit C for code. We will get to that in another episode. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna just drop in to my module and I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna pick slot two for my NPC and I am going to right click. Oh, but that's not working, Corey. So here's our very first command. command. Okay, we love commands. So if you remember in the first episode, myself and Amanda told you how you could access your commands. And this was, if you're using a laptop, you would use the forward slash. And if you're using a touch tablet device, it was the little speech bubble up at the top of the screen. So you're just gonna touch that. Okay. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go forward slash. Yeah, done. WB. So in here, in this space down here, I'm going to type WB. For World Builder. Okay, and I'm going to click Enter. Enter. Yeah, so I can click this here. Okay, so now I'm going to try with my right click again, yeah? Yeah. To spawn. Aha! There we go. Yes, it says NPC. Yeah. So I'm going to now right click. It doesn't look like an astronaut no. automatically. So I'm going to right click on that. And you can see it says Appearance here now. So I'm going to go across. And here's my astronaut, woohoo! <laughs> and I'm gonna name my astronaut Astro Amanda. I love it. 
for myself. And it says here, which is so good, it says edit dialogue. So your astronaut can be saying something. So if we want you to maybe document your learning here, you could maybe talk about where you are, what you know now about Mars, what you're learning about Mars. Maybe you'll go research some facts and have your astronaut tell you them when you meet them. And um, that would be amazing. Yeah. I don't have time to do that right now. <laughs> so I'm going to click edit dialogue and I'm just going to say, um, welcome to the Mishnok rover. Uh, here we gather information about Mars. And you could go on and on and on, but I'm happy with that. Now, if I want to actually um, see the speech bubble uh, from Astro Amanda, though, I have to turn off World Builder, don't yes. I? Yes. Exactly. So I just do the same thing again? The exact same thing again. Forward slash WB will so turn World Builder off. WB. Okay. And now if I right click on Astro Amanda, you see that little bubble comes up. Of what and I can actually liked. use Immersive Reader and I can get it to actually play back whatever the speech is. Unreal. Too. Okay. That is cool. Brilliant. Great. I think we're done on that. Okay, so we learned a lot today and it was so exciting. We learned all about our solar system and the planets. In particular, we focused on Mars. And we had a discussion about some questions we would ask if we were to determine if humans could actually live or land on Mars. And also if there was ever life on Mars. With all this in mind, now we want you to take on today's episode challenge. So we want you to design, plan and build your very own Mars rover. Keeping in mind the various tools we use, such as our poster and our NPC, which was our Astro Amanda. Brilliant. And if you want an extra challenge, one thing I want to point out is where uh, we are now, where our rovers are, the Perseverance one and the Mishnok rover, um, you can see there's like lots of walls around us here. Um, and it's going to be pretty hard, I think, for these rovers to get out of that hollowed area. Yeah. So maybe in your design, you can kind of come up with a cool way to kind of get out of there. Um, or you might decide, if I fly up a bit, you might decide to build your own little mini rover maybe on the outside. So there's an extra challenge if you feel up to it. Thank you so much, though, for watching today's episode of DreamSpace TV. We hope you enjoyed it and learned lots about space. The next time, we are going to be deserted on a desert island. Join us then. Thanks. Bye. Bye.